we just went through a little stretch of Tuckamore, tangly old spruce stunted and uh, Zachary came cruising behind me but he had no pack on so I'm gonna go back and try to find it now it must be hooked in somewhere where is it Zach? where's your back Zachy, where is it? Where's your bag? I can't find it. Bingo. Good thing uh, it's red. So if you're ever gonna get a dog pack, get something that's bright colored, because that can happen. All right, Zach, let's get this back on you. These sections of stunted spruce can be a nightmare, and they swallow up gear. Over the years, I've been stripped of a few non-essential items. Losing Saku's food would have put us in a difficult situation. But on this day, the odds were in our favor, and we were speared by the wilderness gods. Temperatures really heating up in the afternoon, enough was enough. And we both jumped in this small pond for a refreshment. Oh, Sackler feels good, bud. Woo! I'll turn you around. Floating around, I wondered. Were we the first human and dog to swim in these waters? One can only imagine. What's that, sack of moose? Hey, it's a nice moose, isn't it? Nice bull. You got a fine set of antlers coming in, doesn't he? Another days in the books here for me and old sack. I just gave him a supper, and uh, for me, it's sidekicks and tuna. Probably one of my favorite meals I carry in the bush with me is just a simple sidekick with, uh, with, with tuna added and it could be dehydrated tuna uh, you do yourself which hydrates not too bad or rehydrates sometimes if you, it can be a little hard still but uh, right now I just have a little small can I got at the grocery store up and olive oil is added to it so you get extra calories from the olive oil but that's what's for supper right here just letting it cool off now Saku's there basing in the moss cooling off actually because it's been hot in cloudless weather the last two days Especially at this elevation, there's nowhere to hide, there's, there's hardly a tree we've passed bigger than us. Uh, you know what, I'm having a tough time staying hydrated. I was cramping up a bit today, even though I had drank at least four or five liters of water. 
still cramping up so I shut it down mid-afternoon we made another six or seven kilometers or something I don't know what it is but we made progress and that's the main thing uh, you know when Saku was slowing down a bit in the heat so I figured you know there's no point to killing ourselves early hey Saki uh, but that's it that was to be expected this is the most strenuous part of our trip uh, I can't see anything being more difficult than this now the terrain is starting to level out more there's less up and down Another day, sack boy. Just waiting for the kettle to boil now. Thick fog. Got visibility cut down to pretty much nothing. Even worse than yesterday morning. Uh, it's just past seven right now we had a good rest didn't we sack had a good sleep it was nice to cool off uh, with no sun beaming down on us it was a nice welcome break <clears throat> but as the kettle boils now I'm just throwing a scattered stick on the fire because we don't got many there's not much wood around here just enough to like last night just had enough to cook supper and that's all there's enough to really do is to boil the kettle, you know, uh, once or twice. Like into the late evening hours yesterday, couldn't really sit back and enjoy the fire because you'd have to be walking for a long ways to get enough wood to sustain it. And every, anything you do get is just, uh, you know, two finger width, not very big. If you're lucky, you might find a big stick, but <laughs> they're hard to come by. But that's it. That's the price you pay to come out in a spot like this, and I don't mind it. I didn't bring fuel with me either, because it's just too much extra weight. I tried to trim my pack as much as possible, so no fuel came. No mini little stove like I normally have. The one I screw on to the top of a fuel can, so that's it. But the country now, uh, towards Meal Peg, and as we get closer to the Grey River, it's been trackless. Uh, sometimes we've followed game trails, other times we've had to pick our own way through. And uh, that's been challenging at times. Yesterday, Saku's pack got hooked up, mine got hooked up. Uh, I was just inspecting his belly and his legs and stuff then to see if there's any, you know, significant cuts, anything like that. But it's only a few small scratches and a couple fly bites. He's fine. But it's important to do that if you're going through rough terrain, you know, or just in general. Check for that. And I've been checking for ticks and stuff as well because although they're not really prominent in Newfoundland, they have been found recently. So. Uh, but all is good with Saku, all is good with me, and uh, we're just working back to the Grey River, hopefully by the end of today, we'll be on the river itself. Basically I took a route that Alvin Young had recommended to me, uh, and that was to stay off the early sections of the Grey River because it's pretty... It's filled with rapids, it's rugged, 
they're steep gorges so we're basically walking around that section and we're swinging back into the river itself and uh, it's been it's been a good challenge but hopefully by the end of today we'll pretty much be there Just about ready to break camp here now. It's cleared up a bit. Um, <clears throat> there's a bit of there's a bit of a method to the madness here of loading the pack. I got all the heavier items, mostly my food sack, in close uh, to my back, and then uh, it's probably midway up the pack. That's the heaviest thing I got. The lighter stuff, uh, like sleeping bag, tent, and tarp. Uh, and clothes is kind of at the bottom which keeps the food bag up off the bottom a bit because you want that heavier weight towards the mid or high part of the pack and uh, That's pretty much how it is Everything else is kind of put in there like a puzzle uh, pots and stuff well my only pot and uh, the little frying pan lid I got there is towards the back and that's because that's a lighter item and uh, there's a couple other lighter items behind that as well but the main thing is, is the heavier stuff is closer to your back and a little bit up off the bottom and uh, you can carry the weight more comfortably that way and then Saku's pack is more or less uh, just equal weight on both saddles on both sides uh, for example, when I got into camp last night for supper time, I fed him from this side, and then this morning, I fed him from this side. Uh, the more unbalanced it is, it makes it lopsided, and it can get a bit uncomfortable for the dog. This day we weren't the only ones making progress. Those big and small were out to get work done and do what it takes to survive. This battle shows the true power of an ant as it latches on to a landed wasp. A rare and interesting sight, Saku thinks. So we're a couple hours into the day here. Right now we gotta go down this little, and then this valley, which is a stream that runs into a river down here, drops off a ledge, a waterfall, and goes down into a river that runs through here. Still not the Gray River. Gray River's over these hills in the distance. So we're gonna go down here, up, follow this ridge, down the other side, keep going straight, around that far little peak in the, I don't know if that's five, four or five kilometers away, a bit further around that, and uh, we'll be down by the Gray River then. Yeah, we, uh, we don't, it'd be nice to go direct and go down and up where the waterfall is, but down by there it drops pretty steep, and there's a lot of short, dense bush down there. It'll be a snarl, so. Unfortunately, we got to take the wide route and get up on the ridge. But that's it. We're getting closer to where I, I suppose our first checkpoint, which we'll be getting to the Great River. So not far away. What do you say, Zach? Zach's over getting a bit of shade. I was just over there then too, behind a big boulder that was laid down by the glaciers. So conveniently for us, we got some shade. And that's it. That's it.
Tonight's dinner, bag of Mexican rice, and a tin of smoke kippers, or herring, or whatever you want to call them. And uh, you're ready to go. What a freaking view, man. Panoramic. Oh, I can see for miles and miles and miles and miles. Straight through this little, there's a bit of a pass there between two ridges. You can just, it goes on and on until there's a ridge in the far reaches. Yeah. And we are <clears throat> at a spot where I said earlier that I was going to go down a valley up the other side and keep going to reach the Grey River but you know we haven't budged reason being <laughs> is because when we left this spot I went down over the hill and when I got down a few hundred yards I noticed my GoPro was missing and I had it on my kayak paddle just clamped on so I came back and I walked back probably a kilometer and a half looking everywhere. Of course with our packs off and nothing. So when I came back after the kilometer and a half walk, I checked this camera and I had taken a video up on this peak as we were just walking around. And I noticed the GoPro was on the paddled in so it has to be in this section of about 200 feet down the hill beneath me. So, I said I'd give the rest of this day to look for it. You know, it was hot, so there was a big rock I was using for shade. And uh, I looked it over for an hour, then I came back up and took a break for a bit, and I went back down. Anyways, I've done that for probably a few hours, and I haven't found it. So that's it, I suppose. I'll get up and have one more last look tomorrow. Because I hate to lose something like that. I mean, if it was something less significant, I'd just say, screw it and go on, you know? Like if it was my water bottle or I don't know. Something I could get by without. And I can get by without the GoPro, but it's just, it's a it's a GoPro, you know? Jeez. Anyhow, so, uh, that's it. So tomorrow we'll reach the Grey River, hopefully. You don't know, because you can't put a time on anything out here. An old trapper once told me that, and I've probably said this before, but when you're moving through the country, whether it be by foot or dog sled or machine, you don't know. You don't know. Paddling, it doesn't matter. You can't put a time, weather, conditions, you don't know what's coming next. So we may get there tomorrow. We may not. I'm not going to make any promises. Uh, I guess we'll wait and see where the wind takes us. Hey, Sack. Sacky's back. Hove off in the tent, taking the snooze. Anyhow, I'm going to eat this rice. And, uh... Mmm. It's good, a little spice to it. It's one of those ones, uh, it's a sidekick one, but it got beans and stuff in there. Black beans and it's got a bit more content than, this, than the normal sidekicks. This is a bit more filling, it's heavier. More calories too, a little more than your average pack of sidekicks. But uh, that's it, eating this and uh, I'd say that'll be it. I'm not going to take you on a GoPro hunt with me. <laughs> <clears throat> Thank you.
the tech of the moose, hey? That's another big bull, bud. What a beauty. Oh, we're having a morning snack. Awesome. Today is an idle day of searching for my camera. I hoist the tarp above camp to protect us from the scorching sun, as it has more uses than just keeping you dry. Combing the road ahead, I sit and think of how others would cherish these moments. You don't have to take off for weeks into the woods for all these rewards. It can be in a wild space closer to home, for an afternoon or a night. However it might be, there's one unique feeling to be gained from the experience. And that is one the human spirit has longed for since the beginning. Freedom. The freedom to roam and break loose. To be who you are and listen to your heart, soul and mind. Not the wiry noise that surrounds us in the city. If you're willing, out here you can taste that indescribable sensation and feed the animal within us all. This trip appealed to me for many reasons. The most attractive being our start in the great wide open, far removed from the confined river valleys. What a feeling of insignificance one can have in such a landscape. Just sat back now in the old tent, having a cup of tea before bed. And uh, today was had a few events in it, I suppose. Uh, woke up this morning, first thing, uh, 6.30, 7 o'clock, something like that. And I got a fire going and had a cup of coffee. And then right away, I went down looking for the GoPro. And I looked for just about an hour. Uh, nothing. I was digging around through the bush everywhere. Came back up. Had some breakfast. Uh, sat back down and... Uh, Oh, I uh, just consider packing and leaving. But I said, you know what? I'll go down again. I went back down. Looked around. Another 45 minutes, nothing. Came back up. And then I was just getting ready to pack up, you know. And I took my, this camera out. Because I didn't want to leave. I knew I knew the GoPro was right here behind the camp somewhere. Anyways, I took this camera out and I was just sitting back, taking a moment. Starting to get hot then. Starting to warm up, you know. It was, I don't know if it was 10.30 or something. Uh, and I was basically on this camera. It doesn't zoom in extremely far to see some of the far ranges here. You can see, you know, in this landscape, some of the ridges and stuff. Uh, but to make your focus sharp, you know, perfectly sharp, you can zoom in. There's a zoom in function. And uh, I zoomed in on a couple ridges and I use that as, a, as basically my binoculars because I don't take binoculars with me. And I was zooming in along ridges and 
I scoped a moose, nice bull moose, and you know, and I was looking around, I said, you know what? I said, that's a sign. The GoPro is there, I'm gonna find it. I'm not leaving until I get it, you know? So I said I'd take one more look, third try. Got up, I went down around, rummaged in the stunted spruce and whatever shrubbery was down there, and bango, I found it. So, I was pretty pumped about that. Uh, you know, <laughs> put in a few hours looking for it, and you know, as I said, if, if like that was a pocket knife or something, I would have been, I would have been gone yesterday. But where was my GoPro? And uh, me and Heather went to Europe there last month, and or not even last month, whenever a few weeks ago from this point in time. Right now, it's second uh, or third August, but a couple weeks ago we're in Europe anyway, so all that footage would have been lost. And some footage from this trip, so I wanted to put in an effort because I knew it was there. Uh, anyways, I found it. So at that point in time, it was middle of the day. And uh, it was, again, another extremely hot day. There wasn't, wasn't a cloud in the sky. And uh, I said, you know what? We have a nice campsite up here. Uh... You know, we've been in the heat every day since we started. Even although yesterday was a, a shorter day, we were still out in the heat. Uh, and we haven't had a whole lot of shelter from it. So I said, I'm going to take this day. And uh, we hung out here and it was blowing a gale. I got the tarp up above. I rinky dinked the tarp up there and I cut a couple sticks down. And I got that up for some shade so yeah stuck around here and you know just noodled around for the day it was nice patched up the tent there were some small flanker holes from fires and stuff patched them up with duct tape and Whatever, just did a bunch of things. I couldn't really go far. I wanted to go fishing this evening, but the wind was blowing a gale up until only a few minutes ago. So, uh, at, at one point, I thought the wind was going to take the tent and go on with us. <laughs> oh, I thought it was going to, I thought we were gone. Everything, but I had it, I had the hatches battened down nice and tight. And we were all right. So, that's it. That's the story of our day. Back at it tomorrow. And hopefully, we'll finally reach that Grey River. Just finished cleaning up a little mess in the tent here this morning. Zach, did you have a little accident this morning in the tent? What's wrong? You're not feeling too good? No, you're feeling good. You just ate too much wood yesterday, didn't you? Behind my back, eating wood. Look, sleeping bag's drying. Puke all over that. I got a bit of moss from down by the stream there, the little pond there. Soak it up. Nature's paper towel. Antibacterial and everything. Well, Sack, let's try not to do that anymore, hey? Or at least wake me up. Maybe you tried. I was out looking late.
cooked a couple uh, partridge there in their brown feathers, plumage, beautiful. Uh, of course, I just happened to get footage of one because Saku missed him, but he took off after the other one. Saku went and chased her for around five minutes. Didn't know where he went, down the bush somewhere, but he came back. So that was good, do a little playtime for him. Hey, Sack, hey, little playtime. <laughs> good boy. Yeah, you're beat out now. That's what he gets. Right now we're on the uh, northwest arm. I guess it's the northwest arm of Grey River, I suppose they call it. Uh, that's what I was told anyways. And uh, we're at the headwaters and it's pretty dried up here. Uh, we gotta cross over to the other side of this river, which is right now, you know, not deep. In most parts, I found a shallow section, so we're going to cross there, probably up to our, up to my shins, up to Saku's hips. I'll take the pack off in my hand and carry it over, so don't get wet. Uh, but yeah, from here we're onward, then north to Gray River, making good time to start the day. The the little day off yesterday, looking around for the GoPro and and whatever. Wasn't a setback or nothing. I think we'll be okay. I think we got enough time to get to the end to meet our deadline. And uh, yeah, so quick little sit down and back to work. Right around that little peak, the Grey River is awaiting me and old Sacco Boy. Hey, Sack. Little lunch break on this small brook behind this rock for some shade. Little fire to boil a kettle. Keep the nippers away. You can't beat it. Some kind of lunch break, isn't it, Sack? What are you doing over there? So basically this little stream runs into the Grey River, just not far, like 150, 200 yards. Uh, but we're not gonna follow this, we're gonna go over another little marsh for three quarters of a kilometer, maybe a little less than that, and then we'll come out to the river. Then I gotta make a decision. Uh, do I walk up the river? because it should be shallow on the sides. It's, it's summer, it's dried out, and the Grey River has also been dammed at its headwaters at Mealpeg Lake. Long story, but if you watch my Crossing Newfoundland series, I talk a little bit about the hydro project up there. So Grey River was dammed off, so in the upper reaches where I'm going, it should be dry. So I could walk the shores, uh, but if it isn't as shallow as I expect it to be, I'm gonna go and take ridges and go around the river to stay clear of the woods down by the riverbanks. I'm gonna go on some of the high ridges and get a little further up uh, until it's more wide open because down here now there's, there's actual forest, there's woods, and uh, I don't wanna be bushwhacking through that stuff. So once I have a little luncheon, and uh, go on up to the Grey River, I'll make a decision then. But just a beautiful day. What a beautiful day here in Newfoundland. 
it's been a, it's, the weather's been fabulous so far. And this part of the island is I can't even believe I'm in Newfoundland right now. To be honest with you, this is more similar. But what we've just gone through was, was crazy. So privileged to be here and uh, happy to see what's next. Worth the way to hear, bud. I'm thinking uh, this way. Let's go. Come on. This way. Something was digging there. Okay, Zach. We got some open turf again. Little trip to the brook was nice though. Cool this off. Refueled, refreshed. And uh, I'm gonna try to put in another couple of hours a day. It's coming up on five o'clock now. Now we're just walking the banks of some pretty dried up unnamed river. Uh, I think soon the Grey River's coming out according to the map. Should be another half a kilometer or less. One sec. Perfect going here up on the banks. And some spots we can even go down on the rocks. There's actually a bit of water here. So stay out of that. We got it all to ourselves in here. Amazing, amazing, amazing. And I mean this, no one would really have any reason to be on this particular river, so I wonder, just wonder, when was the last time someone was here? There's a couple of eagles flying around. I didn't get a good shot of them. They were out on and a jiffy, but I seen them flying around. We just seen a moose flash of a moose. I thought it was a bear at first but uh, upon further inspection it was a moose and he took after the bush so it's nice and quiet and uh, that's why these animals are here. They're undisturbed. Beautiful. Hey Sack, come on bud, let's go. Welcome to the Grey River. In the next episode, we'll make a decision. Stick to the river or head back into the country.